white paper. It is the top civil servants. And of course you will expect them to protect the interest of the large and wealthy federal bureaucracy that we have. So what I believe is that yes, the Orosanya report is a good report, but then the white paper of the report is not in conformity with the spirit behind setting up the Orosanya report. If I have the opportunity, I will review the white paper so that the white paper recommendations can be in conformity with the principles setting up the Orosanya report. It is not that, you know, I want to render people jobless or anything, but I think there should be a rationalization of the federal bureaucracy that makes sense. And that also reduces cost on the public treasury. So we started with that, okay? Like I said, I'm going to be going in and out of them uh, as time uh, permits. Like I said, that uh, the uh, Christian Association of Nigeria invited uh, Tinumbu to a party, a sort of a reassurance uh, meeting concerning this Muslim Muslim ticket, and as well from experience they have uh, with uh, Bokuari. So I'll share what they had to say and uh, what Tifnubu also uh, told them uh, before we go further, okay? So this is the president of uh, Christian Association of Nigeria addressing Tinumbu, and according to them, yes, this is the interesting part. I'll let, him, let them speak first before I continue. That will address the crisis of development in Nigeria as follows in point four. One, Creation of state police or fully decentralized police authority. Two, clear and unambiguous religious neutrality of the Nigerian state. Three, enforcement of fundamental rights of all Christians, including economic and social rights. Four, restructuring to decentralize governance. Five, equitable and enforceable sharing of executive positions. Six, ethnic and religious present representation in military and security agencies. Seven, self-determination for all Nigerian people. Eight, no to Ruga, yes to Ranchi. Nine, education and free healthcare to all Nigerians, including the Almajeris. Ten, no open grazing, rather modernization of animal husbandry. Finally, eleven, local control of local economy, including waters, rivers, and forests. In conclusion, the Christian community in Nigeria is worried that Nigeria is slouching towards complete state failure. We are worried that disorientation in public leadership makes this a self-fulfilling prophecy. But we are reassured by the words of the scripture that whenever a people recognize... Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was uh, almost uh, caught uh, off guard there anyway. Yeah, you heard all the, all the listed. When he was listing all those uh, things from Christian Association of Nigeria to Tinumbu, it was a sad day, he was listening to him. Uh, to the president, no to Ruga, no to uh, open grazing. 
uh, local economy controlled, waterways, seaways controlled by the people. They are indirectly saying no to waterway law. Uh, and many other things listed, by the way, yeah, which we are going to review after Tifnumbu also respond in a bit. It is just like indirectly saying, we are not going to support you. Because these are the things that uh, they have been fighting with Bokowari for the past seven years when uh, terrorists are killing people. Bokowari and his government they were appealing to the terrorists. Now, this is the uh, Tinumbu, the presidential candidate, with shitty man beside him, the backer of, uh, 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 what do you call it, the, the, the uh, uh, terrorist apologist, I would say. So you can easily just say you are not going to, you're going to, I mean, you're not going to support us. So don't read all of this to us. But nevertheless, Chief Numbu came with a written an, uh, answer. Maybe they sent him the, what they are reading. You know, he was reading them. Maybe they sent that forward before Chief Numbu came. And his response, yeah? Uh, in part, here is one of them. I did not come here to flatter you. Yet, it is less. Thank you for inviting us here for this important meeting. It is good, proper thing that we meet to share our ideas and concerns regarding the nation we love, Nigeria. In case you hadn't heard, and but I will learn if I say you are a man. I want, I seek to become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> Not on religious ground, not on faith. I depend on the privilege of the Constitution and we, the people, we, the people of this country, who signed the Constitution. We agree to choose democracy and our method of democratic governance that every four years after we establish the framework of the governance structure, we hold the elections and all inclusive elections from the age. 18 and above. You as an organization <laughs> If I, okay. Let me give you the other one. Here's another one. I did not come here to flatter you. Yet, it is necessary to state that I see your work as essential. No society or nation can rightly function or achieve greatness without its moral and ethical fiber being properly intact. Without the right frame of mind and disposition of heart, we cannot attain the good place goal as destined for, for this nation. Thus, I see a mutually reinforcing what I hope to be my future responsibility as present and your ongoing responsibility as a vital moral compass for the nation. Historical support for the church. My belief in the need for secular government and faith based organization to work and unity. It's not something I adopted recently to benefit my. Okay, that is, a, that is an interesting one, okay, where he told them that I don't have any agenda. All my children are Christians, you know, so don't worry, okay, you know. So I'll show you that one. Like I said, I'm going to be mixing them up, okay. That's his response to the uh, demand of uh, the Christian Association of Nigeria, which I am going to repeat just as a reminder. What were the uh, demands? 
Then we'll go to Atifku in a moment. That will address the crisis of development in Nigeria as follows in point form. One, creation of state police or fully decentralized police authority. Two, clear and unambiguous religious neutrality of the Nigerian state. Three, enforcement of fundamental rights of all Christians, including economic and social rights. Four, restructuring to decentralize governments. Five, equitable and enforceable sharing of executive positions. Six, ethnic and religious present representation in military and security agencies. Seven, self-determination for all Nigerian people. Eight, no to Ruga, yes to Ranchi. Nine, education and free healthcare to all Nigerians, including the Almagerists. Then, no open grazing, rather modernization of animal husbandry. Finally, eleven, local control of local economy, including waters, rivers, and forests. In conclusion, the Christian community in Nigeria is worried that Nigeria is slouching towards complete state failure. We are worried that disorientation in public leadership makes this a self-fulfilling prophecy. But we are reassured by the words of the scripture that whenever a people recognize... So a quick one before we go to Atifku. I'm going to repeat that again at some point because uh, Alimajiri, Borono, education, fuel subsidy, debt, uh, state police, uh, restructuring, and all those things, right? We also asked Atifku in a place, like I told you, the answers, the body language, and the use of words of their responses. But for the one about uh, those Christians in Nigeria who are worried uh, about Muslim Muslim tickets, well, I don't know if this will impress you. This is Stephen Mbou's response. The rumor that this is a plot to suppress the Christian community is untrue. And it's unfortunate. I don't have that agenda. And the book will stop all my dreams and the present. Not on the praise, vice president people delegated. <laughs> Do you understand? It will end on my table. I don't have that agenda. But no, no, anyway, they ask Atifku about uh, fuel subsidy and other stuff. I'll start with this one, restructuring. How do we ensure that if we have state police, that the politicians at the state level do not use them against our people. As of today, a few days ago or last week, you remember how we were attacked in Borno State. Can you assume that if they had a police, state police, what they will use it against us? So it is up to the, again, National Assembly and the State Assemblies to come up with a formula. What type of state police can we have? I have argued that in the United States, you have about four or five levels of police. State police, county police, borough police, this police, that police. But then, they all act within the law. But we don't have that kind of guarantee here. So we will have to find a way 
on how we can regulate the activities of state police, even including the federal police, which uh, federal officials sometimes misuse. So uh, it, is, it is a double-edged sword. But we have to do it to ensure our peace and security. Of course, uh, other than that, you have to make sure that I, I always give an example. I say Egypt has a population of about 80 million. They have 3 million policemen on the streets. Nigeria has a population of over 200 million. We have less than 250,000 policemen on the streets. How can they police this country effectively? So we have Clearly, we have a shortage of manpower, as far, even as far as the federal police is concerned. So we believe that a shared responsibility between the federal government and the state, first of all, will increase the number of policemen all over the country. Secondly, of course, with better training and equipment. But most importantly, they are key. I know you are going to come to that issue. If we can deal with unemployment and we can tackle the issue of education. For instance, the, the chaps that attacked us in my Duguri, I was watching them. Those chaps cannot, couldn't have been educated. I believe those were chaps that were misused, you know. First of all, maybe in, to do Boko Haram, and after they have been uh, brought back from the bush, and the politicians are now using them, you know, to do all these kind of, uh, of things. They couldn't have been in school. I was watching them very, very closely. They were throwing, uh, shooting at us, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. Only yesterday, we lost one of the people who uh, were attacked, and we still have about 70 people in the hospital. So they couldn't have been school children. And even if they were school children, you know, many schools have remained closed for several months uh, today in many parts of the country, particularly in the northern part of the country. So here again, uh, uh, the Orosanya report will surely be uh, reviewed and implemented. It was our baby, and if you elect us, we'll complete the job. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Just following on the insecurity and what happened in Bruno State, is that you will agree, which you just mentioned now, that since 1999, we've had so many economic reforms. But we are where we are. They said inflation might likely be reported today to be above 20%. You know the unemployment rates as at 2014, they said we had about 60 something million Nigerians working. But as of 2019, it has gone down to below 40 million. Different other economic and social problems are there. So the question we're asking is if you're elected as the president come next year, what are the key economic reforms that you will? that we should expect from you, and when will they be implemented? How will they make significant difference from what we are seeing now? Because, of course, as you said, you've implemented so many of these reforms, but it doesn't seem that we are seeing the visible results of progress. Thank you. No, I don't agree with you with your last submission. The economic reforms we implemented during the PDP years produced very positive results. That was why if you look at our rate of unemployment, our rate of uh, inflation, you know, our uh, rate of uh, debt, our rate of foreign reserves and everything cannot be compared with what has been happening in the last seven, seven years. So our economic reforms really worked. 
But you people said you wanted change. And you have had change in the last seven to eight years. So it is now up to you to compare our records of performance and also the performance of the current people whom you want or you wanted. And then decide which way uh, to go. But I stand to say that I am extremely proud of the records we achieved as the PDP government between 1999 up to 2015. And if you give us the opportunity to serve you again, I can bet you we will do better than what we did. So this is what I can say. As so, so, so in terms of key reforms, Your Excellency, what, what direction can you point us in terms of what will you do in just key ones before I invite my colleague Dr. Muda Yusuf to now go down into more economic specific sectors of the economy. Just key reforms that we should expect from you. Maybe for in instance, your first for instance, when you come to the issue of fiscal and monetary policy, I have already said I would prefer to see the elimination of multiple exchange rates. I would want to see a convergence. And you know that we did it before. And if you give us the opportunity, we will do it again. Now you have about four or five exchange rates. And it is the private sector that suffers, which contributes about 79 to 80% of our GDP. So, as far as I'm concerned, that will be uh, uh, dealt with. Secondly, I have said it before on interview, that I will continue with privatizing you know, uh, aspects of our oil and gas sector. Up to now, our Boriborne, Moriborne refineries are not functioning, and yet we are spending money on them. As far as I'm concerned, we will rather privatize them. We have about three of them, and we have been spending money without any production. If we had privatized them, they would have been producing today. No private sector will buy a refinery and be spending money. Like I said, it is to give you insight into how they speak, not what they said. They said, or nobody said, oh, Atiku said. Now, you watched that, right? Sorry for the, uh, a little bit of a uh, lagging part of the video. But there's a part. Like me, I didn't. I'm, I wasn't really interested in most of uh, what he said. Okay, so but I pick a part where he said, "But well, you people, you people said you wanted change now." Okay, without rubbish and everything. In fairness, he says something about state police. He says something about uh, the foreign exchange, which is the forex as well, right? And then uh, you know, selling off uh, the refineries and privatizing the NNPC, Blah 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 blah. Atif could actually open his mouth at that uh, meeting and he said PDP was doing well. But you people said you wanted change. Is that true? That you said you wanted change or they wanted the change of government which now brought in Bokuari? Okay. I don't know which of them. But this, is Atif this uh, was Atifku in 2015. Just a bit of flashback. Don't go anywhere. APZ! APZ! Change! God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank you. We will change, Jonathan. Don't worry. See 
is the man who is going to change Jonathan. The chairman of our great party, a party that is set to make history in our country. Last night, when I stood here, I said, history is going to be made at this venue. I said this convention is going to also make history in our political evolution. I also said this party is going to renew our democracy in this country. And since last night, you have witnessed what I describe as the most credible, transparent, <laughs> elections to be ever conducted by any political... No vex. As I told you, it's just a flashback. Just that... Uh, Nigerian politicians have no real shame. And I've told you as well that you are just a pawn on their chess table. And most of the time, most of you actually set yourself up for these guys to be played about and you'll be told what you wanted to hear. I mean, Atifku is talking about uh, democratizing the seaports in Nigeria. You get what I mean? The Eastern Nigeria should have their seaports. And he was kind of more composed, by the way. In fairness to him, it looks, it looks like a, he believes so much in, those, in that book they wrote for him, his manifesto. So when they were talking about Eastern Nigeria, he knows who he, he he's talking to. I'll give you seaport. Atifku said, in a restructured Nigeria, he said, now, now take your time as well, okay? So listen to this, uh, to this part uh, of uh, the question they asked him. Just a quick one. My friend said, gave a story that they were exporting goods from Nigeria and from, from Ghana. The one from Ghana got to Belgium in three weeks. The one from Nigeria got to Belgium in three months and three weeks. So the question is, what will you do with regard to our seaports, at least to make sure that clearing of goods becomes easier, faster, and shorter? And also related to it is the issue of the aviation sector. In particular, do you support the Nigerian A project? Will you continue to buy more planes or allow the Nigerian A to continue? Or what will you do? Thank you. Yeah, because you have asked two questions that are completely at opposite. A and C. Related. Okay, transportation related. I support the private sector as far as Air Nigeria is concerned. I don't want to see government involved in any airline business. Let the private sector take it. See all the major airlines in the world, are all private sector owned. Why should we as a developing country waste so much money on setting up airline? If we set it up after independence as, as a prestige, there is no longer question of prestige. That should go to the private sector. Your first question was? Seaport. Seaport. I am directly affected. My fact, some of my factories are situated in Abuja. Some are situated in Lagos. I mean, in Yola. Believe me, sometimes we have to close the factories for months waiting for our raw materials to come from Lagos. I have this view. Let's have the Lagos port developed 
to handle traffic from the western side of Nigeria. Let's develop another seaport on the eastern side to handle all imports and exports. Because I looked at and did my calculation and my arithmetic. If I have a port, if I can take my containers to a port in the eastern port, it will take me less than 12 hours to get to Yola. My container will, will leave from either, whether it is uh, Calabar or Port Harcourt or Uyo, it will take less than uh, 12 hours to get to Yola. That's why when I travel abroad, I went and met the biggest shipping company. I said, look, I want you to come to Nigeria and see how you can develop you know, an eastern port so that at least I can convey my raw materials uh, easily to, 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 to my factories across the country. And every effort we made, of course, whatever improvements that was made at the Lagos post was made during our administration. Since then, no improvement has been made as far as the Lagos ports are concerned. We have to diversify our seaports to deal with our vast country because the vast, our country is so big, so vast. One port alone cannot handle the majority of our imports and exports as is currently obtained. This is what I believe will be fair to everybody in this country. You know how that is going to be appealing to an average uh, Igbo businessman. Eh? It will be so over the moon. But for those who know what happened when Atifku was in charge of the economy of Nigeria, economic team, and he was in charge of uh, selling the Nigerian properties then, Atifku set up a company, or should I say, brought in a company where he had interest, uh, which uh, is called Intel. And since 2000, sorry, since uh, 2001 until 2016, 2017, Intel has been collecting the taxes from Lagos ports and any port in Nigeria. But the one that is actually functional is that of Lagos. You know, similar to what Tetif Nubu set up, are far better. Here you get. Nigeria have a seaport authority, which they call the NPA, Nigerian Port Authority. Now, Nigerian Port Authority have different departments, including security and every other thing, right? Including financial. The ones that have to deal with uh, revenue collection and processing and all that, which will then be linked, supposedly, to the national ports. But you see these criminals. Hmm? When they tell you they are trying to do some, some renovation, some reforms, eh, they might sound good. But if you pay attention very well, they are robbing you blind. That's exactly what happened in Lagos. Lagos State, as a government, they have a ministry called the Finance Ministry. They have people there collecting salary every month. They are working for the Department of Finance of the states. Now, in that ministry, they also have the revenue collectors. There are people hired. They are collecting salaries. To what? To make sure that uh, people pay their taxes and every revenue due government is paid by everybody living in that, uh, in that state. But surprisingly, eh, according to the Tifnumbu's uh, economic council, eh, Corruption is too much. That is still the money. Government is not making money. We need to bring all the money together. And they couldn't do that as a ministry, as a government. They had to hire another people, which is them. They are the people they put together. Because the purpose is not to make more money for you and spend it on you. It is to make more money for themselves and stop all of you who are working for government and stealing money and bring everything closer to them as much as possible. Then. Cut them with knife, 30%. Baba, do you understand what that means, right? The government, there is government. There are people employed to do that job. 
raise the revenue of government, ensure that every penny due to government is paid, right? No corruption, no nothing, Abi. Now, people have been so corrupt, they are stealing. So what do we do? Let us uh, stop that stealing. Let's put a system together that all the money will come to a single place and it won't go to the end of anybody anymore. But we can't do that within the system. We can't put that system here. We have to build it outside and then uh, subcontract it so that uh, when you make more money, uh, one moment. My friend said, gave a story that they were exporting goods from Nigeria and from, from Ghana. The one from Ghana got to Belgium in three weeks. The one from Nigeria got to Belgium in three months and three weeks. So the question is, what will you do with regard to our seaports, at least to make sure that clearing of goods so corruption. So Alpha Beta was born. All the money that is in the pocket of thieves that didn't get to government now goes to the same place. At least 90% of the money go to the same place. Now that makes it more money. Instead of that money to just go to government, uh -uh, now we collect the money. Now we bring the idea. We are going to collect 30%. That simply means the 30% that everybody is putting in their pockets is now going to the pocket of one man, Tif Numbu in Lagos. That's exactly what Atifko did. You see all the money you have been paying. Importing this, port duty, uh, these charges, that charges, and you have a receipt that says Intel, 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 from, 20, um, from 2001 to 2017. That was the company Atifku started and gave that job to. Because Nigerian government, they cannot collect their own revenue because of corruption. So therefore, they now put it together, a private agency, to collect the money and collect their own share. The difference between Atifku and Tifnumbu Alphabet, Atifku's Intel at Lagos Seaport, and then uh, Tifnumbu's Alphabet in, the, in Lagos, the difference is this. Tifnumbu's Alphabet, they make steady money. So they are delivering their 70%. There has not been any fight. Sure you get. Since Alpha Beta has been collecting that money in Lagos, they have been collecting their 30% for Tinumbu. And then the Lagos State has been collecting their 70%. And they are happy. In the case of uh, Atifku and Intel at the Nigerian Port Authority MPA from 2001 to 2017, they know if you do account. How much Intel they give them? How much Intel has paid them? How much Intel collected as a port duty, port this and that? Eh? How many years is that one? 2001, 2017. 16 years. 16 years. And it took Bokuari two years to remove Atifku Center from Nigerian seaports. And they are now using the system that Intel built. Use the system they use in collecting money from the seaport. After removing them, eh, they are now using that same system now to collect revenue from Lagos under a different name, appointed by Bokuari. So, waiting at Tifku, suppose they collect, they don't give them to another person. So, if Atif could come and said, We need to expand, you see, it is a uh, hey, 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 there's, there's something they always say, oh, there's a uh, uh, sweet sour. <laughs> Is a sweet sour offer. Okay. Now, if they build similar pots, what you have in Lagos, if they build that same, they will have to build about uh, three of them in eastern Nigeria. They will build in Calabar, Oron. They will build the uh, one uh, right there. You see that river Niger, they will dredge it. It's going to become a bigger seaport if it does that, right? But when they finish using Nigeria money to do all of that, Atifku, you know that like Alpha Beta. Atifku will be your landlord. They collect your own rent. But you may not see anything. Oh, no, no, no. That's the sweet sour. The sweet sour part. Okay? But many of you have seaport. All of you, my brother, Chooks, uh, Uche, uh, Uche and Sons, uh, importers and exporters, you will not have to take all your, what you won't go sell outside Nigeria. You won't have to take them to Lagos. You can deal and cut costs, save money, and give job to young people there. 
But when it comes to what money is there for Nigeria, now that one I know for bank on, remembering the uh, the history of Atifku. Now let's go back to the can. Can we're telling Tifnumbu something apart from their demand? Though, listen to this one, and I'll tell you where that is coming from. Religion, ethnic tribe, and so many other dirty things they're going to use in their 2023 charade. Having conversation like this on record, though, is good. Khan said this. Peace and righteousness. This fellow explains why Nigeria has failed to realize its manifest destiny as the greatest black country in the world. This fellow started even under colonial rule when the colonial administration refused to fully integrate the country and erected divisive and exploitative social and economic institutions. The Nigerian nationalists who succeeded the colonialists failed to reverse. They failed to reverse the structure put together by the colonialists where people with different this or that are modeled together in a country that nobody actually understands anybody. Except when you say what people want to hear, they say, yeah, I like that, ah, yeah, one Nigeria is a lie. The Christian Association of Nigeria are worried and their worry is germane. Listen to this cleric. I want to be taught at you in Gili. He was a fear. I eat and Zili. I want to tell that door. You let the church to a fall out of the world. I want my soul, you say. You let what you send it for some woman. What I want my soul, Maria. I didn't send it also. I mean, what do I have a money when I will feel Muslim alive ticket? Money, I shall want you to your cheap battle time. Oh, my men will be. Emiti mo fire o make it to mura make it so my o ma ti dili. What I want to be one kind of sister. Di pass o ma yo kan yo bi abi meji. E ja do jade. E ja wo population to ko ju. To ba ri afa mi ya yi fe lo fe le olorun o ma yo o ma ti obi. Wa fi ko ni wa kan of salata. O wa so pe muslim ni so salati. ไอ้มุสลิมเนี่ยตัวไอ้ตาเด็ดวันนี้ว่าว่าแกว่ามาตั้งวันดอกดอกแกเป็นชิโนบุนีเดี๋ยวมีโรวชิโนบุนี่ม
لعنت الله على الكاذبين